black. <laughs> You've done this for almost 15 years now and, and much longer beforehand um, behind the scenes. What have you learned is more difficult, building the roster of a great team or managing the success and the <clears throat> egos that go along with a great team? Hmm. Um, you know, honestly, those were hard things, but nothing unanticipated. Uh, to me, the hardest thing in 15 years yeah, is building is that arena. <laughs> really? Yeah, definitely. San Francisco? Come on. I mean, just the red tape. The California, San Francisco, yeah. it was just a really difficult thing to do. Hardest thing I've ever done was working with others, obviously, but working on doing that, that was a really difficult thing. And I didn't know anything about real estate development, to yeah. be honest. So I think that was the hardest single thing that surviving the pandemic, which oh. none of us have ever yes. seen before, was a really hard thing to do. We've had to navigate a couple of really big things while we're dealing with what you just brought up, basketball issues, yeah. building rosters, dealing right. with the effects of winning, yeah. the egos and so on. Honestly, I don't think that's been all that hard. I okay. mean, we have great people doing it. I have Steve Kerr, I had Bob Myers, I got Mike Dunley. I, I, I'm, I, we can do that stuff. We can do that stuff. And so I, I don't view that as all that hard. Are you frustrated with the amount of red tape that the, I don't want to get in trouble, but it feels like the league has put together certain parameters in the current salary cap structure. And it feels like it's, it's very penal toward mm -hmm. people like yourself and, guys that are running teams the way you are, which is pouring money back into the product, trying to win. That The point of sports is to win. And it feels like a lot of the rules are trying to punish those who have done it the right way, drafted their own, developed their own, paid their own, brought in more talent, poured the money back in. Like, I get frustrated on your behalf. It's the Eddie D rule. Yeah. In I, the NFL, the salary cap rule is the Eddie DeBartolo rule. And I look at this rule drives me with, the, with the second apron yes. and the tax apron and all that stuff. It's to go to say Warriors rule. Hey, you guys can keep talking about it because I can't talk yeah, about it. Yeah, no, I don't want to. Yeah, 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 we don't, trust me, we, all want no, to, we don't no, have money help you out. No, 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 I'm not going to get in trouble because I'm not going to say anything bad. Right. I'm just going to say that whatever the rules are, we're all part of a league, and we, we signed up for these rules, okay? And we help make the rules. And so um, you can view it however you want to view it. Um, is sometimes it's it helps us, sometimes it hurts us, depends. On, but the bottom line is whatever the rules are, we're going to do our best to to be good. Okay, to win and hopefully to make some money. Um, but it's all about investment. You know, I believe in investing in the future. I grew up in Silicon Valley in business. And what do we do? We don't have companies that, that generally have dividends until they get really, really big. Yep. They don't spit out capital return to anybody. They just build. They reinvest to build for growth. You want to grow it. And if you grow, the spoils come. Yep. And that's the way I view the Warriors and I view the NBA and I view sports. I, I view it the same way. We're gonna we've never taken any money out of this thing. We've made profits. We built a great arena for the city for us, um, and we invested in players in a tremendous way in the last few years. Tremendous way, record way. But the bottom line is, we're investing in the future. We're trying to create something bigger and better. <clears throat> it manifests itself in franchise value, um, at least according to those that look at those things. Right. And look, I like the scorecards too. I, <laughs> I, I don't mind seeing all that. But to be honest with you, it doesn't really affect me because I ain't selling and yes, we're not right. selling and we're not taking anything out of it. We're reinvesting yep. because right. we're trying to do what? Grow. We're trying to get bigger and better. Okay. And that's what this is about. Not only as a team, but as a business, as a charitable organization within the construct of the Bay Area, we want to be able to help a lot of people, and we've done that with our foundation. $15 million, right? $30 million. $30 million. When you include in kind. Wow. And, and growing. Double so that. we want to be number one. We are number one, I think, actually, in that. Right. And we want to continue to do that. That's really important to what we do as well. So it's about growing, becoming better, becoming bigger. Hey, you talk about getting bigger and better, and Nicole's helped out the foundation. She runs it. You say $30 million, and you guys have grown Chase Center. So the growth in your 14 years. What is the most... Uh, is it the four championships that you're most proud of? Is it Chase Center and Thrive City itself? Is it the Community Foundation, which helps out all sides of the mm -hmm. Bay Area? What is the one thing that you, right now, today, you say, boy, I'm, I'm, I'm mostly proud of that? That's a very interesting question. Look, obviously, winning the championships, because it is sports, right, probably has to be number one. But I am really proud of this, uh, this building and what we've managed to accomplish in building that arena. It was so, I mean, no one will ever know how hard. It was, and how expensive it was and became. And it's just a really hard thing to do. You had to change peers. <laughs> yeah, so I'm really proud of that. I'm proud of the fact that we got through the pandemic and the way we did, and we're, I'm proud of the fact that we're bringing out, we're finally entering the WNBA, and we're doing something that I think is going to be really big and great for the community. And uh, so 
I'm proud of it all. I, most of all, I really enjoy having partners also that I've done this with. It's not just me. It's my wife. It's my kids. It's right. my investor partners who most, almost all have been with me for the entire 13 years. And we've enjoyed doing this together. We travel together. We have fun. We go play playoffs, you know, in different cities. We play golf together. Like that's a shared experience. And that's same thing with our fans and the, that's, we're all part of it. I love, look, I'm not an idiot. I like walking down the street and somebody saying thumbs up or, hey, right. great yeah. job or whatever. Right. Instead of, hey, you screwed up. <laughs> right. You know, or you really did something. And, you know, I got booed once, as you good. remember, a lot yeah. of years ago now, 11 years ago. Uh, that was not fun. And I don't want that again. Did you recognize it <laughs> I want to. I want to just... Right. We want to be successful, and you want to do something great for the community. Did, did you recognize in real time that you were catching booze for like 30 years of anger? Of course. At just the whole situation? Because that, that is a seminal moment. I mean, Raymond's talking about how that's the start of the 30 for 30 or the book that there's going to be written about your guys' tenure as owners. But, like, that is one of those moments. I was pissed off. You traded away Monte Ellis for Bogut. He's hurt. What's going on? It was a team Monte, team Steph thing. I it mean, was no, a deal. Like, and then Bill Simmons came out with lot. that article. It wasn't about well, you. You were right there. Uh, what was it? 60 ways to lose yeah. a fan base? I hated and I was that like, article. Yeah. No, it, it's <laughs> fun to go back and look at now. <laughs> but like, <laughs> how wrong can one person be? Oh, oh it's wrong a lot. <laughs> hey, no, it's wrong but, a lot. Do you look back at that moment and go, look at me now? Or is no. that one of those things that kind of just shapes your, your point of view? Or how do you view that? No, I mean honestly, I don't, I don't really think about that to be honest. Uh, I, I, I look. It was no fun, certainly, and I, I consider, look, everyone fails in life. Even all successful people have times when they failed. I told you about the ABL in the nineties. Yep. I got booed here in the first two years. I don't know if that was a failure, but it felt like it. So, everyone wants to overcome those things. You are stronger when you go through things like that, and you become better at what you do. And I think that's a. Truth for all young people, by the way, when they're developing their careers, it ain't straight line up for anybody. Okay. You have to go through some tough times, yep. some travails. And so, you know, I don't really, I look back at some of these things and the, the booing was, you know, a really good thing to happen actually in retrospect. I'm an optimist. I look at it as like in retrospect, a really good thing to have happened because when you hit rock bottom, there's nowhere to go but up. So yeah, true. No doubt. No doubt about that. Joe Lake of Live in Studio. As you are listening to 9570 Game, KGMG FM and HG1 San Francisco, always live on the free Odyssey app. Download the Odyssey app and favorite 9570 Game for the best and most up-to-date sports coverage. And don't forget, we're live on YouTube and Twitch right now. You can wave at the camera, Joe, if you want. Powered by First NorCal <laughs> Credit Union. We're going to open up the phone lines at 915. We'll get some questions. See, Joe's not afraid of the fans. He's going to take some calls here. 888-957-9570. Ask Joe anything. You brought up your kids. Now I'm intrigued with Kirk and, uh, and, and your family here. Where do you see your two sons in the next five, ten years, their role in this organization? Well, they've continued to uh, grow and get take on more and more experience. You know, Kirk's been with us for 13 years, yeah. Kent, for nine, I believe. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, uh, you know, I told them from the first day they joined us, I'm going to treat you like every other employee. And if you screw up, I'm going to be really mad. And if you do well, I'm going to be really mad. And you need to work harder than anybody else because people are going to be really – Mm -hmm. Critical, the fact that you're my son. It's yep. a burden, okay? So I'm proud of them. I'm proud of the fact that they have thick skins, that they've continued to just do their job, get better and better and better at what they do, and I think they're respected around the league. And that's all I can say about it. What are they going to do? When they'll prove themselves, and, you know, if I'm not here someday, I think they'll obviously wind up owning and running this thing, um, and uh, hopefully they'll be ready. How's the dynamic been with uh, Mike Dillingby? I know he's kind of been in place for a long time, Group threads all day because, you know, you and Bob talked a lot about how texting nonstop or calling all day. How's that going? Is it, has the relationship changed at all? With? With Mike. I mean, has it, oh. as his role has grown, has well, you should ask Mike that. I, I think um, Mike is great. Yeah. I love Mike. I love the fact that he's very collaborative. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing in our organization and the way right. I like to do things. You know, people think, you know, I'm, I have a certain image or whatever, but actually I'm, I try to be incredibly collaborative with other people. Uh, do, because it's a we thing. We do things as a group. The reason we're successful as an organization, hint, hint, it ain't me. It ain't just about me. It's about a we thing. It's about Raymond Ritter doing his job. Only one time did he not do his job real well. And <laughs> when, when, I need this. You told me it was we'll perfect. I'm kidding. But Xavier the, McDaniel must have been here. Oh, he must have been in the building. Wichita State, Raymond Ritter. That's why Xavier McDaniel. He is. Xavier McDaniel is a great PR show. guy, yeah. vice president of the Warriors, and has done an incredible job for a lot of years. But the point is, it's a we thing. We have such great people in our organization. 
I am so proud of that. That's one of the things I'm really proud of, that we've developed our organization, that we continue to develop and develop young people into their jobs to get better and better at what they do so that we always have somebody great in a position to continue to do a great job. Uh, you see, speaking of Mike Dunleavy, obviously he's replacing Bob Myers. He yes. did great things here. And we all love Bob Myers. He joined us all the time here at 95-7 Games. I saw him at a Niners football game. How weird has it been for you to just see Bob not in a Warriors uniform or just a Warriors polo or whatnot, and he's on a set with ESPN. I and haven't Wesner seen Oski. it yet. Uh, you haven't? No, I need to watch him. He was on the uh, broadcast last night. He's too. pretty good. I saw a highlight of him on the first one when he was asked to comment right. on the, the Clay stuff. Yeah. yeah, but I haven't actually seen him do it. I'm sure he's going to be really good. Is my guess. He's, Two years, three years, and he's back in league. <sighs> I know you don't want to speak for him. I think he loves basketball. Yeah. You know, he might miss it and want to be back. But I think he did need this time off, as this has proven. Yeah. No one believed that a year ago, but I think it was the truth. And yeah. look, look what happened. He's 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 doing this. I think he's going to be great at it. Um, and I, I do miss him. I miss talking to him all the time. Uh, but I do have a job to do, and Mike and I talk all the time, right. and Kirk and the rest of the group. And so we're, you know we're we're doing it. We're really getting along great, and it's it's been pretty seamless. Yeah, I know we're going to get into the roster, but. Like, you fascinate the hell out of me. All these little things you say, I got a million follow-ups. You said that people view me a certain way. If you don't mind me asking, mm. what is it that you think people view you like? Like, what what do you, what do you believe the, the perception to be that you think is erroneous? <laughs> Boy, that's an interesting question. Because it sounds like it bugs you. Like, and I, I no, don't want to be viewed a certain way. No, it cheap? doesn't bug me. It doesn't is it bug that because Twitter says you're cheap? <laughs> No, no, that's, no, no, that's, no, that's so fake. I don't say We don't really, I don't think I've seen control? that actually. <laughs> that you're in total well, I think control? people think that, you know, I'm a, a very tough or megalomaniac or something like that. I, I You know, I'm not. Uh, or too involved. I, I love, that's right. the one that bugs me. I will say that's the one that bugs you're me. You're the owner. Well, it's not just that I'm the owner or whatever you want to call it, governor or whatever. I think, honestly, that's a misnomer. I believe that a great owner of any sports team, actually any organization, needs to be very involved. That mm. doesn't mean they're making the decisions for mm. people. You let people, you empower them, you let them make decisions, you let them make some mistakes. But the truth is, you have to be involved and know everything that's going on. If you don't, you're not going to be successful. You're just not. It's really all about the details. It's not about the one big thing like everyone thinks. It's all about the details in every respect. And so if I'm going to own this organization, this business, and be involved, and Peter's going to be involved, we're going to know what's going on so that we can make good decisions right. when people bring to us things like, hopefully, the new name of the women's WNBA team. You know, people are going to come up with a name. They're going to bring it to us. We're doing a process. Right. And we need to be involved. We need yes. to understand all the yeah. issues there. Well, we're going to take calls. 888-957-9570. Talk to Joe Lacob. Ask Joe Lacob anything. Maybe you have a team name in mind for the new WNBA team that will be coming to the Bay Area. 888-957-9570. We'll do that in a few minutes. Now, I'm eager too. Because Joe asked you that great question. How do you find out about some of these criticisms about yourself? Do people tell Are you, you on they Twitter? Do tweets? No. no, no you no, got no, no fake account. No burners? I didn't say that. No <laughs> burners? <laughs> Is it because of Twitter? Because there's a lot I of... Said, you said, am I on Twitter? Meaning, do I tweet? And I have never tweeted. So That's you're good. out there somewhere. I'm... In, I'm, I can't believe how disciplined I am about this. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking to two guys. Now people are going to... I have wanted to tweet, tweet. tweet. <laughs> right. so many I, times. Oh, I know you do. <laughs> but I, I am not. I, I am not because it don't, I don't think it serves me a positive... That's a smart. Is that where you find most of the stuff or is it just through no, word No, I do mouth, read or? Twitter religiously, X, whatever it's called. Yeah. I, I do because it's news. Right. And that's the way the sports business works. True. You, you have, have you to. talk to Elon? Now I got to ask you. Yes. Him. What's your thought? What? Because he's he's another one. He's out there. So well, is is there? Give me something on Elon. I gotta get. I gotta. I don't you. know him well enough to give you anything. I've only met him once. Uh huh. Uh, he was at a, a concert, I think, with Chris Rock and whatever was here. Okay. Oh, Chappelle. Yeah. Chappelle. Yeah. And after there was a meet and greet, and I got to talk to him for twenty minutes. That's actually the only time I've ever spoken wow. with him. I, I just figured that you get to meet everybody, and you know, I'm, I'm jealous of, Fan of the Tesla interactions. Fan of the Tesla. Or are you driving? A, I'm you a driving? car guy. I yeah. like sound yeah. and fury. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm with you. I'm with you there. Joe Lake up live in studio. We're going to take some calls. Line them hey. up. 888-957-9570 uh, is the phone number. Ask Joe anything. Now this roster. You brought up Kaminga. I don't yes. think we dove into it because he's become a fan favorite around here with his athleticism, uh, his personality. He's so young. He's so raw. But we saw glimpses of him. Oh. 
guarding guys like LeBron and guarding wings. We're like, wow, Kaminga could really do this. But Luka Doncic is of the world. What is the expectation? Because somebody asked me yesterday, do you think Joe, Jonathan Kaminga is going to be here in three years? And I said, why not? Why not? He's somebody you could, you could build around here. Your thoughts on Jonathan Kaminga and the prospects of that year three leap? I mean, I think he is. Uh, I think it's looking really good, right. the evidence so far. We're going to find out a little more as the year goes on. But uh, I think he's incredibly talented, like we all, I think everyone feels that way. And it's a process. He just turned 21. <laughs> think about that for a second. Know, that's crazy. He just turned 21. It used to be you didn't get out of college till you were 21 or 22. Right. So I think this is the time when you're going to see him really take off. And I think he understands after being around here a couple of years, you know, what he needs to do to contribute and be successful on this team with these players and this coach and this organization. So I think he's doing a great job. I expect him to have a big year and probably be here a long time. When you look at the roster right now, like, I, 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 oh man, they got a lot of small guys. You know, there's there's not a lot of height. You got to go up against Jokic. You got to, at some point, hopefully you face Embiid in the finals or something right. like that. You got to get through Anthony Davis, you know, at least hypothetically. Um, do you like the 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 size of the team right now? Because you got Kavon. I guess Kaminga could be utilized as a big. Sarge. Draymond. Dario Saric. Saric, who I, lo I well, love Saric. Everyone says we're small. We're actually, I think we should look at this, but I think we're bigger than we were last year. We got to be a little bit bigger. Right. Yeah, well, Saric is what, 6'10? Yeah. And, yeah. and I like Trace him a lot. is 6'10. Yeah. And, uh, and he's athletic, by yeah. the way. So, Great I mean, hands. I think we're bigger than we were last year. Are we one of the bigger NBA teams? Probably not. But when you look at size of an NBA team, I, I do think you need to look at the whole court. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and, uh, Clay has always one of the things Clay has always been is a big guard. There aren't many guards the size right. of Clay, right? Andrew Wiggins is a prototypical size mm -hmm. three. So I don't think we're really all that small. Draymond is the one position you say he's clearly undersized for the position he plays. Uh, and Looney is I don't know if he's undersized. He's actually seven four wingspan. You know, wingspan is more important than height. I love Looney. You got to look right. at the next yeah. these guys sometimes. So I I and he's you know you get, guy gets twenty rebounds a game in right. playoff games. So. I don't think you can sit here and say he's too small. You brought up Andrew Wiggins. How important is it for Andrew Wiggins to be that same Andrew Wiggins from a couple of years ago during that final? Because I, I could make an argument he was the second most important warrior right. for that entire playoff run. He was yeah. spectacular I on both he's ends. The X factor. Yeah, they, they need him this year big time. Well, we do. And when he plays with, as Steve has said, with force, it's a whole different, whole other player. Mm -hmm. He changes our whole team. So I think. Um, I think he's ready to prime for a good year. I think he knows one of the reasons we didn't do so well last year is he missed half the season, mm -hmm. you know, for whatever reasons, an injury and some other things. And I think, you know, hopefully he's going to be here all year, and that alone makes us a much better team. And GP2's Agreed. back, Young Glove, and Gary Payton, the second that media day was yelling, we're 11 deep, we're 11 deep, and he looks to be healthy as well. He's a key part of that championship team with the way he defended as a small guard and playing that dunker role on offense here. But we're 